What's up there guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm Rick, this is Fanfare for the Conscious and in the video today, I'm gonna to be talking about revoking your consent to be governed. Let's dive in. So today we're talking about one of the methods that you can use to revoke your consent to be governed and this particular method was pioneered by a uh, sterling gentleman called uh, Michael O'Benissia. Uh, you can find him at the Benissian Dot net. Uh, he's done lots of very interesting work, including um, beginning a class action lawsuit against the banks for uh, 11.2 million or so illegal mortgages in the UK, um, which is has amazing impact for uh, the financial system as a whole. But we'll talk about that in another video. He's also worked on a Magna Carta 2020, which you can also find at the Benissian.net. Um, but today we are going to be talking about his sovereign declaration and claim of right which was sent to queen elizabeth ii and i'm going to be reading that directly from his website today i uh, won't be reading the whole claim and uh, sovereign declaration in their entirety because they are very long but i'll be reading some short excerpts from them for you so as posted on the blog 3rd of october 2020 revoking consent to be governed sovereign right of claim in August 2008 CE, I came to a seemingly inevitable crossroads in this present incarnation. Unforeseen circumstances had presented me with two choices, declare lawful rebellion under Article 61 of Magna Carta, or revoke my consent to be governed, serving Eng Elizabeth II a sovereign declaration and claim of right. For two very simple reasons, I chose to do the latter. Firstly, lawful rebellion has never made any sense to me since I never had any allegiance to the monarchy, notwithstanding any invisible or implied social contracts, which meant I was simply not able to declare that I was withholding my allegiance until the restoration of the monarch's constitutional responsibilities. Secondly, my own research on the common law had already revealed to me that a rebellion is never lawful and b lawful rebellion is therefore a legal oxymoron. Furthermore, serving a claim of right allowed me to express my own feelings about the state of the world and the nation I was adopted by at birth, as well as my intentions regarding the way in which I was going to proceed in life from a philosophical perspective, as well as a legal and lawful one. In the autumn of 2008, I served such a document by post office recorded delivery upon the Queen at Buckingham Palace, to which I received no sort of response. In the spring of 2009, I amended the document to reflect the knowledge I had gleaned over the previous six months and sent it to Buckingham Palace by special delivery. The redacted version of the superseding document is transcribed below. So I'm only going to read a very short uh, excerpt from this and cover a few of the bullet points uh, because he has actually covered 50 different numbered points in this and it would take an awful long time for me to go through them all. However, like I said before, you can find that document at the Benissian.net and I'll provide a link in the description below for you. So this is the Sovereign Declaration. I, Michael John of Benicia, a blessed living soul in the physical form of a flesh and blood man, who, according to the eyewitness testimony of my biological mother, separated from her womb in the general hospital of the county borough of place of birth on the date of birth, do hereby state clearly and unequivocally that the following is a verified plain statement of the facts as I perceive them. Whereas it is my understanding that 1. Natural law, also known as the law of nature, is that which the supreme being, the sovereign of the universe and creator of all that is, has prescribed to all mankind. Not by formal promulgation, but by the internal dictate of reason alone. And 2. Natural law forms the permanent and underlying basis of all law, and all theories of natural law have been an integral part of jurisprudence throughout legal history. And three, natural law is to be distinguished from positive law, which is the body of law created by man. And four, natural law is both anterior and superior to positive law. And five, the principles of natural law derive from the fundamental laws of the universe. And six, the fundamental laws of the universe include without limitation, the law of allowance, the law of intent and the law of balance and seven the law of allowance dictates that all sentient beings must be allowed to exercise their own free will 
at all times and without exception. And 8. Common law is that which derives its force and authority from the universal consent and immemorial practice of the people. It has never received the sanction of the legislature by express act, which is the criterion by which it is distinguished from statute law. And 9. In accordance with the laws of nature, common law dictates that all men and women are free to do what they choose for themselves, provided they do not infringe the rights of life, freedom, equity, and or the peaceful possession of property of another. And 10. The land commonly known as England is a common law jurisdiction. This continues on for many, 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 many layers where he breaks down all the levels of his understanding of how the government function and how they should function and the structure thereof. Um, very much worth a read if this is something that you're looking to uh, enact yourself. Um, as soon as I'm personally able to, I will be serving this um, document upon the government and upon the Queen and upon any other entity which wishes to try and claim rights over my soul and over my sovereign living being. This goes all the way along through these various points as listed on my board, all the way down to point number 50, the last one, which reads, Permanent, irrevocable estoppel by acquiescence, barring any policy enforcement officer, court and or prosecutor, from bringing charges against this flesh and blood man and blessed living soul under any act, bill, statute, bylaw, ordinance, regulation, directive, order or code is automatically created if this sovereign declaration and the succeeding claim of right are not rebutted by lawful counterclaim point for point within 10 days of service as certified by post office special delivery. Wherefore, be it now known to any and all interested, concerned or affected parties that I do hereby revoke my consent to be governed and honourably declare that I have reclaimed my unalienable rights as a sovereign being non pro tonk. Furthermore, it is my honourable intention to live peacefully and lawfully, free from any and all statutory obligations, restrictions and restraints, and to travel freely without charges, delays or disruptions, whether travelling domestically or crossing international borders in my private sovereign capacity, maintaining the rights to create, build, cultivate, harvest, store, trade, exchange and serenely subsist without governance anywhere on earth. I hereby state clearly my intention to do so without limitations or regulations arbitrarily imposed by individuals, organisations and or legal entities of any and all natures and descriptions. So that there is the, the Sovereign Declaration and what follows that is the Claim of Right, uh, which I'm not going to read um, word for word again if you want to go and check that out go over to the Venetian.let with links in the description for you uh, and you can check that out and read it for yourself. Um, again, this is another multi-point claim, um, 23 points, um, with the ending quotation being, as the supreme being is my witness, I hereby affirm that to the very best of my knowledge, the entirety of the foregoing is true, correct, and not misleading. On the 26th day of the month of March, in the year known as 2009 CE, autographed by Michael of Benicia, without prejudice, without recourse, non assumpsit all rights reserved, errors and omissions are accepted, executed in the presence of a notary public. So again, this covers the right of self-governance and gives notice of the fee schedules for any transgressions against that self-governance. So then he asks, so what did serving this document actually achieve? Exactly what I intended it to. The unchallenged revocation of my consent to be governed under the laws of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Upon reflection over the months and years which have passed without challenge or counterclaim, I have come to understand that what I originally hoped would be an all-in-one administrative remedy was ultimately a declaration to the woman who represented the interests of the monarchy that I would be proceeding to live freely, in peace and in accordance with natural law, rather than acquiescing to the statutory dictates of tyrannical corporatist government. However, in the event of as of COVID-1984, I had not revoked my consent to be governed by tyrannical diktats and wanted to achieve the same end, I would have sent such a document to Bojo's de facto government on the basis that Queen Elizabeth II was deposed by way of Section 30 of the EU Withdrawal Act Agreement on 2020. So those were the words of uh, Michael Obanissia. Please go and check out 
uh, thebenician.net for lots more information on the Great British Mortgage Swindle, Magna Carta 2020, and revoking the consent to be governed. If you have liked this content, don't forget to hit subscribe, the thumbs up, and notification bell set to all make sure you're always kept up to date with all my latest content, which drops on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 8 p.m. If you want to talk to me and want to be part of our sovereign lawful assembly of nations, then head over to lawfulbank.com. It is our digital meeting house and lawful assembly building. Take care of yourselves, guys. Don't forget to stay free, think free, and act free, and I'll see you next time.